Hello and welcome to a couple of very special tapes on the subject I call creation. I need to probably define a few terms here before we get going and explain a little bit more about what I'm talking about. Here on Earth we look up at the stars and peer out in the sky and so forth and wonder where we may have come from, how we got here, uh, is there any meaning to our life. We search through uh, different belief structures, religions, philosophies and so forth, trying to answer the big questions in our life because we really have no factual knowledge exactly where we came from and what's going on in the universe. So far, technically, we've, we've been able, unable to get off our planet. We don't have the technology to fly out into the cosmos, nor do we have the science yet to understand how the universe may have come about. And if there is any logic to the universe, what exactly is it? You see, it's the logic of what the universe is actually doing is where the explanation of the planets and the life forms actually come from. It is the task, you might say, of our modern day religions and belief structures to try to explain what the universe is doing, to try to explain the meaning of our lives. Scientists are also doing this. Every day they're working on unraveling the mysteries of the universe. They're trying to figure out how it started, how it's evolving, what it's actually doing. They're trying to provide answers to our questions about ourselves. So actually, religious leaders and scientists really aren't too far apart. They're really searching for answers to the same questions, uh, just from slightly different perspectives. Scientists are trying to, you might say the nuts and bolts guys, are trying to actually logically explain what the universe is doing and how our lives may fit into it, where religious leaders are more or less philosophical speaking trying to explain it or theologically speaking, trying to explain it. They're not concerned with the actual nuts and bolts. They're speaking from more of a spiritual standpoint. Well, unfortunately, neither our scientists nor our religious leaders have been well-schooled, you might say, in the matrix of the universe, how it started, what a universe is. Is there really logic in the universe that controls our lives? Well, among the great Pleiadian information that Billy Meyer has been able to... Um, receive and understand there's quite a bit of information on that and it actually it came in little pieces all throughout all of his contact notes and if you've gone through all of those tapes you'll notice that uh, so far I really haven't spent too much time trying to explain uh, much about creation philosophy theology these things because it was in different sections through all out the notes so I tried to put it together all into two cohesive tapes so not only can I explain it a little bit better, but hopefully my explanation then will be a little clearer and you'll have a better chance of understanding it than if I gave it to you in little pieces. Because I found out that throughout the entire context, they really answered most all the big questions. Uh, on these two tapes you're about to listen to now, I'm going to explain a lot about what the Pleiadians have uh, provided Billy with, the answers to the big questions. What is the universe? How did it start? Uh, why is there a universe? Why are there life forms? And what is the meaning to our lives? And is there something beyond our physical lives? So that's the things we're going to talk about on these two tapes. So I almost warn you right now, uh, whatever uh, preconceived notions you may have, which are fine, uh, about what you think life is and how it may have come about, you're probably going to be opened up to some new ideas on these two tapes there. I know I certainly was when I first heard all of this information. It made a lot of sense to me, and personally, I believe in all the concepts that the Pleiadians are stating here. It all makes very much sense to me. Quite a bit of it, most of it, seems very familiar, which is probably what uh, drew me to a lot of this information to begin with. So anyway, for our, the sake of our discussion here, uh, a creation is slightly different than what a universe is. And that will be explained as I tell you how a universe actually comes about. So let's uh, back up to the very beginning and start there. You see, once we have the science and technology on our own society to actually leave the planet and go out and study the universe, we'll start answering a lot of questions. And as our science gets more developed, our technologies get better, we'll probably be able to actually move in time, move backward and forward, and watch cause and effect. Actually watch the universe unfold and see things happening. We also will come in contact with other races far more developed than ourselves. I'm sure there are many races out there, like the Pleiadians, and many that we've never even heard anything about yet, which are far more advanced than we are, and already benefit from a greater time, space, and a far greater intelligence. So we have a lot to learn. 
Leaving our planet is like the first day of school for us as a race. So the things we're going to talk about here is a, probably a pretty good primer for our first day in school. My point is simply this, that the Pleiadians, as well as many other races, races who've already been out there, their technology has allowed them to study the universe and actually understand what's going on. In the case of the Pleiadians, it's even gone so far as to come in contact with other races far more developed than themselves, who are on the very throes of perfection of the life form, and have far more extensive understandings of the concept of a universe and the meaning of life than they do. So they're far more well-schooled than we are. The information on these tapes is the current Pleiadian philosophy of life and understanding of the universe. You see, the universe itself, the universe that we live in, we have no known uh, parameters, you might say, or knowledge of its size and what it's actually doing. We believe the universe is expanding currently. That's the current theory for our scientists. And according to the Pleiadians, they are right. It is expanding. It will contract later on. Okay, let's start at the very beginning and explain exactly what a universe is and what a creation is. You see, our universe is not alone. There are many universes. As a matter of fact, the universe that we are living in is inside of a much larger universe where it is estimated by the Pleiadian technology that there are 10 to the 49th power number of universes in this very large universe. 10 to the 49th power means if you took a pencil and sat down and made a 1 and then put 49 zeros out, that's the size of the number. Now that's a huge number. That's how many universes there are in this very large universe. And since there is no particular name for it, Billy has it marked down in his notes that the Pleiadians call it an absolutum. And that means that they have no knowledge beyond that. They have been able to move into uh, some other universes and have gained some understanding of what the absolutum may do, but their, limit, their knowledge is also very limited in that area. But they have got far enough to find out that our universe, along with 10, with 49, 0, number of other universes, exist in a much larger universe. And this very large universe, this absolutum, actually is doing something. It's evolving also. It's creating universes. And they have figured out that there are three stages to a universe. Okay, here's what happens. In the beginning, in this large absolutum that has 10 with 49 number of zeros of universes in it, excuse me, when it goes to create a new universe, it has an idea to do that. The idea to create the new universe is called the creation. The creation is an idea. It is an idea embodied into itself with knowledge and understanding. So the absolutum, it is a living life form which has knowledge and understanding because it's already created many, many universes before us, so it knows how to create one. It has an idea to create another one. This idea, this little ball of energy that is embodied with the idea to create another universe is called a creation. And so it does just that. And when it does it, this idea, and remember we talked earlier about all energy, the universe is either energy in a fine matter state or a coarse matter state. This creation is in what's called a fine matter state. Now again, if we have energy such as electricity, things that are unseen, any types of energy, those are considered fine matter. If you have something in solid form, that's considered coarse matter. So a spiritual thought or a creational energy source is a fine matter, whereby a planet, an animal, or a person is a coarse matter, okay? Because uh, we're going to relate to these terms all the way through many of these explanations. So the creation itself is a fine matter energy. It's very small. It's just a thought. It's a very small, like a flea, a little small piece of energy. But it has something unique. Because it's an idea from the absolutum, it already benefits from the knowledge of the Absolutum, which has created other universes before, so it also it's already very, very powerful as an energy source. The energy that is within this little small creation is actually moving in a very intricate, your exotic spiral formation. And in your exhibit, there's a drawing, uh, as best as possible, a little bit about how that energy moves, the formation of that spiral. So it is in there. The idea to create a new universe is a creation and the energy within it is moving in this egg form spiral shape and it's very small 
The spiral is the original spiritual form, then, that will create our universe. The energy that's inside of this small spiral is now rotating. It rotates and it pulsates. Okay? What happens is, over a period of time, this idea, this creation, that has the idea to create a universe, slowly evolves. It works out uh, how and where it's going to do it by benefit of the knowledge it's received from the Absolutum. At a certain point, then, this creation, then, uh, establishes the area where the universe is going to be. Now, picture in your mind, if you will, and there is a drawing in your exhibit called the Absolutum, which was just a quick idea to show you that there's a large universe uh, called an Absolutum with a whole bunch of other universes in it. And what happens is, when our universe then, uh, the creation decides to create a new universe, the area is established where our universe will be. And that's something similar to what the Big, uh, big Bang Theory is. There is something like an explosion, they say, but there's no material or coarse matter that explodes. It's only fine matter. It's only energy. So the energy itself expands and creates an area in the absolutum where the universe then is going to grow and evolve. The creation is doing this. And the creation, again, is just fine matter energy with the knowledge from the absolutum. It has now created an area where the universe, where you and I live, is going to grow. However, there are no material things in it right now. It is of large size, but there's nothing in there but fine matter, just energy. There are no planets at this point, and there's no time involved. It's just energy that rotates in a spiral fashion. Now, the energy continues on now to learn and understand, and the creation gets the thoughts and ideas, understanding, and the sense of reason, and it comes up with the idea of life. Idea is the key word here because as we're learning in science, all matter possibly was formed from an idea. Ideas, just like when you think, are formed by logical conclusion. And as the idea becomes more concentrated upon, it becomes to get stronger in energetic form. It can actually create solid material things. So and this is how our universe has come about. The creation has created the universe and all of this material by the knowledge that was embodied within it. And now we have the giant area. Our universe is growing. There are no planets in it yet, but it has thought, feeling, understanding, sense of reason, and an idea to create life. It then creates what's called space and time. In other words, the matrix then of our universe begins to become created. And we have a big empty universe with movement, because now we have the space, the emptiness, and it creates time. And it does this by virtue of an impulse it gets from the absolutum. Our universe now continues to grow. And as it does so, belts or divisions begin to occur within this large area. Okay? What has happened now, our universe is glowing like a large, the word is so hard, because this big energy form in the middle of our universe, which becomes like a central sun, it's called by them a Sohar. And what it is, it is a concentrated form of the knowledge of creation embedded into our universe. All of this knowledge that is growing on how to evolve the universe is in this central sun area. That is called a Sohar. It's like a bright light. And as our universe then <coughs> continues to grow and expand, it will form belts looking similar to like a tree trunk. And if you look at the exhibit there, you'll see that there are a certain number of belts, uh, seven of them all together, and uh, is how our universe then separates. As time goes by and creation continues to uh, use its knowledge and so forth and understanding to create this universe, slowly those belts start manifesting at different levels of evolution. And the third belt in is called the material belt, as you can see on the diagram. The outer belt is called the push belt, which separates it from the other universes. But the third belt in is where all of the planets, the coarse matter, is evolving. It's similar to like what an egg does. It has different layers in it. Only our universe is divided into seven layers. It is establishing already that there are seven levels, seven different types of energy in our 